so then i go ahead i'm starting the session i'm starting this uh, session okay welcome uh, welcome to the course on problem solving and computer programming using c the title of the course is problem solving and computer programming using c before we get into the details i want to introduce to you the content of the course basically the content of the course basically and uh, who are the persons responsible for it and uh, i'm going to acknowledge to them and uh, who are the persons who contributed something uh, to the slides etc etc first let me start this is the first live session uh, so it's a little bit confusing to me also uh, let me start so disclaimer disclaimer means uh, uh, whether i have copied the resources or not the main one of the main problems with uh, preparing these uh, live sessions or uploading the videos in the youtube is preparing the content so i cannot prepare the content uh, directly taking the uh, taking it from the test books it comes under copyright law so i cannot uh, use the content of the test books programs of the uh, test books even the sentences which are present in the test book if i take them directly it comes under copyright law and we, we are not supposed to uh, violate that copyright law so there is a lot of struggle actually there is a lot of struggle i took 3 months to prepare the content all the content that is present in the slides are prepared on my own and i personally typed those typed the content so the content has to be prepared it took a lot of time it took a lot of time and i have to put a lot of effort so here the disclaimer is all the content of this course including the slides and videos are prepared on my own i have not copied it from any textbook or from any internet source and all copyright laws are strictly followed the content is definitely not taken from any source directly uh, in case uh, if there is any such content it will be removed it will be removed and i have the right whole rights are with me the copyright rights I remember the in the case of these uh, software the books and videos as soon as it is publicized so the content uh, the the copyrights of that content belongs to the author only so you are not supposed to use this content for other purposes in the sense that you cannot uh, actually uh, modify the content and uh, again place it in the youtube or any public resource in any public media so you cannot do it so all rights are reserved and co copyright belongs to me dedication i dedicate this course uh, to my father who expired 2 years back and to my uncle who expired uh, 4 or 5 months back because of corona uh, the two showed me how to live i consider myself to be part of the nature and they are always with me so i generally say even in my personal website you can see uh, i am I was part of nature, I am part of nature and I will be part of nature in future also. I strongly believe in the universe. That's why you can see on, even on my board, I love the universe uh, caption. I love the universe because I think all of us belong to the nature. We have come from the nature, we, are go, we go to the nature. So we will be always part of the nature, we will be always part of the nature and uh, if somebody expires we need not repent and on some day we are going to die so certain things are inevitable death is inevitable if birth is inevitable death is inevitable so i dedicate this course also to my mother my wife my daughter and my son and more importantly the course is also dedicated to all my students I have wonderful experience over these 25 years interacting with the students. In fact, I can say these students are my backbone. Students are my backbone. 
so always depended on the students always students uh, helped me a lot and we learn a lot from the students though we are a, though i am a teacher i strongly believe that i strongly believe that many of you are more intelligent than me the only thing is whether you are displaying it or not whether you are exhibiting it or not so all of you are actually more intelligent than me more intelligent than me so it is my privilege to be a teacher and students are reason to live definitely for a teacher students are reason to live if students are not there if somebody is not there to listen to you then that's the end of the teacher if we have to teach to the walls then that's the end acknowledgement so i appreciate myself first for doing all the smart work and hard work in preparing this course uh, because it's really hard work and uh, have to use my brain also here and there so it's a hard work and i thank the following students of jnd college of engineering uh, these three persons have actually helped me in preparing the content salman for video editing nageshwar reddy of mca for actually uploading all the content to ap state council for higher education lms actually we, i have already uploaded all the videos in the ap state council for higher education uh, lms uh, as soon as they give access uh, to you probably you can access state wide their uh, students can access it from uh, their portal so because it is being lit uh, delayed little so i have uploaded the content in the youtube and anand upadhyay uh, a student from nepal he has edited all the slides in fact uh, the slides which you see in this uh, live sessions will be little different from what uh, you see in the videos uh, only the probably the there will be 1% change not much the background etc are being redesigned and we corrected some mistakes so i thank these students i thank myself so always remember try to appreciate yourself try to appreciate yourself that's very much essential whatever you do whether it is small or big doesn't matter whether you are intelligent or dull student doesn't matter so everybody has the right to you everybody has the right to you and uh, similar to this tolerances cash based tolerance reason based tolerance there should be what is called as intellectual tolerance intellectual tolerance that means if somebody is dull if somebody is not uh, doing well in, in studies say it, uh, we should not go on in try to insult him we have no authority it's a crime it's a crime even if a teacher insults a student intentionally he can ask the student to study better but if he tries to in, uh, insult the students it's a crime so coming to myself coming to myself i did my btech in sv university college of engineering way back from 19, uh, 92 to 96 sv university college of engineering at that time i got uh, 334 rank i did my btech in sv university college of uh, engineering tirupati i got seat here also but uh, due to various reasons i didn't join in jnd anandapur at that time i preferred sv university college i joined there uh, jo joined there and completed my btech it's a wonderful experience it's a uni university environment real university environment so all the students uh, belonging to say the arts sciences msc physics msc chemistry so law students all will be there in the campus it's a wonderful uh, experience so i completed my btech in sv university college of engineering and uh, under distance learning i did um, my ms software systems from wits plani mtech from jntu anandapur college only and then phd phd also from jntu college of engineering in fact uh, i received my phd degree uh, somewhere in, I, i think in 2009 uh, from jain to hyderabad because in 2008 jain to was uh, trifurcated 
So I received my PhD degree from J and Hyderabad actually. But all my coursework was in J and College of Engineering, Anandapur. So total, I have twenty five years of experience. Total, I have twenty five years of experience. And uh, I worked at Pularadi College of Engineering, uh, Karnool for four years. So I worked here uh, next uh, for six years here from 2000 to 2006. In 2006, I was transferred to JNTU Pulivendala. There I approximately uh, I worked for 10 years. And uh, in 2017, I came back here. I came back here. Uh, working in JNTU uh, Pulivendala is also a wonderful experience. I was HOD uh, during the beginning. And uh, I can say the JNTU College of Engineering Pulivendala Computer Science Department is my baby. So from the beginning, I was the HOD, except for the for one or two months, I was the HOD, and uh, I created everything. I created everything. So I worked in various positions in the university uh, as director, as director, and uh, also as board of studies chairman, and I also worked as head of the department at JNT Pulivendala. And I was also part of state level com committees. Uh, Gnana Beri committee was there. And Pradhana Mandri Yuva Yojana, implementation of Pradhana Mandri Yuva Yojana. I was uh, part of that committee. But uh, of course, now the committees are no, long no longer exist. I have uh, several publications to my credit. And PhD is awarded 19, uh, attended various courses. I am a member of uh, ACM, ITPLE, etc. So, this is regarding me. And uh, in the chat box, please reply. If everything is okay, we'll proceed further. Please reply until now, things are okay. We'll go into the actual content. We will go into the actual content. Things are okay. Okay, we will go into the actual content. Why say the module 0? Uh, some of you may be thinking that why module 0? So instead we can go, go directly to the actual content. Or some of you may be interested uh, in uh, C language, you may, may not be interested in other issue, other things which are covered from module 0 to module 4. Actually, I divided this course into, into you can say the 13 modules, actual content and then module 0 which introduces you to the course. There are several reasons for it. Uh, the main reason you can say, uh, we should know about why you are studying this course, why you are studying this course and what should be your study plan. After going through your uh, going through the study plan, definitely uh, you can go to module zero or module one or directly you can go to module uh, five if you already know C language. If you want to know specific topics, then you can go to appropriate modules. So it provides the complete roadmap and what is covered in each module. So you can have a choice. You can have a choice. So I started. This sloka, I start with this sloka. This is the sloka taken from Upanishads. Upanishads are considered to be the gist of Vedas. Uh, if I just simply say I have taken it from uh, uh, Upanishads, probably may not be interested. But uh, if, uh, if you observed, uh, if you have the uh, habit of watching uh, film trailers uh, on TV or YouTube, probably you have heard this song. Uh, uh, in the Ramcharan movie, upcoming Ramcharan movie, I think it is, it is Acharya or maybe some other Ramcharan movie. So this this sloka is there. It is about teacher. It is it's about student and teacher relationship. It is about student and teacher relationship. I don't want to sing it. I don't want to sing it. But you can go through it. You can go through it. So you can uh, again go to YouTube and search for this song. 
in the uh, in the movie trailer you can you can also hear this song so that may be more interesting uh, for you but uh, anyhow it shows the relationship between a teacher and a student may god protect us both the teacher and student All, always the relationship between the teacher and student should be a healthy one uh, there should not be any fear complex uh, there should not be any fear complex uh, the students should be be easily should be able to easily approach the teacher so i also uh, have the uh, some negatives here so usually students don't approach me uh, because my voice is bigger and uh, i usually i am sincere to my duties and people take it as my sincerity as strictness so always help the students but student is a student student has to do his work and uh, I, I don't hate anybody i don't hate anybody whether you study or not it's up to you even if you are a dull student even if you bunk my classes okay even if you don't like me for any reason i don't hate you so you can always approach me you can always approach me student and teacher should work together they should gain some knowledge and they should live in peace they should live in peace according to the holy scriptures if you take guru guru consists of two words actually or you can say the two letters Gu and Ru, Gu and Ru. So Guru is one who takes the student from darkness to light. Takes the student from darkness to light. Here darkness is nothing but ignorance. Initially, it is assumed that student doesn't know anything. Doesn't know anything about the particularly the, about the subject. Student doesn't know anything. So, a teacher is one who should act as the light and he should take the student from darkness to light. So, the great soul of India, Swami Vivekananda, said, education is the manifestation of perfection already in man. Education is the manifestation of perfection already in man. Swami Vivekananda said, the great soul of India said, it's not me. That means he believes that all of you, all of you are already perfect human beings. Doesn't matter what is your rank, doesn't matter what is your category. He strongly believes that all of you are perfect human beings. The only help actually the education provides is, so it allows you to display your perfection. Manif manifestation means display. It allows you to display the perfection inside you so please believe that you are a perfect human being that's where the success starts if you don't believe in yourself then you are gone it doesn't matter uh, you got uh, uh, less marks in um, say 10th class or intermediate doesn't matter you got poor rank uh, in m set doesn't matter so things can change in a fraction of a second Things can change in a, in a fraction of a second. That's where the teacher uh, comes into picture. If a teacher can inspire, inspire the student, that's the trigger point. A small matchstick, match stick. or even if you take two stones and create the friction and uh, burn some leaves in the forest, it can burn the entire forest. So the trigger point is very, very important. So believe in yourself, believe in yourself, definitely you can do a lot. Engineers build a nation. These are the words of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India. Engineers build the nation. How engineering is required? Engineering is required for the betterment of the society. And we are influencing all fields of, all the fields, including arts and medicine. Nowadays, engineering is very much influencing the medical field suppose you take this uh, you, you take the orthopedist so uh, if there is any fracture if there is any problem with your legs etc they will insert the rod 
and they will fit the screws etc what is it it's an engineering contribution the chair on which you are sitting the mic which you are using the camera which you are using the computer which you are using the cell phone which you are using the table which you are using the speakers which you are using all our contributions of engineers only so again appreciate yourself you are great being an engineer being an engineer you are great so please appreciate yourself and uh, moreover please don't think that you are missionaries you have come here you have joined the computer science you have joined the jnd college of engineering it doesn't mean that you become too serious so have fun fun in computing that's very much essential you should have a sense of humor you should have a sense of humor what you are seeing is seeing is the words of alan j perlis so don't take yourself seriously have fun okay you are not preaching you are not preaching people okay there is nobody to listen to you there is nobody to listen to you i am also not preaching you i am also not preaching you i am telling something you have every right to listen to me or to neglect doesn't matter so you have every right to live the life in your own way in your own way but only thing is you should be happy you should be happy you should be happy now you should be happy in the future also so plan accordingly is your choice so at present i am working as professor and uh, moreover i am an ordinary person with ordinary abilities but with a passion to do something for the younger generation i am not any extraordinary person i don't think i am superior to you I already told you i think most of the youngsters are superior to me they are better with age with the diseases entering your body so you will lose some you will definitely lose some talent you will definitely lose some talent so definitely you have very good talent use it so the title of the course is problem solving and computer programming using c now it's very very important why this title what is the number one skill that is required for you what is the number one skill that is required for you so is it communication skills there is lot of hype regarding the communication skills is it the number one skill that is required communication skills so called soft skills etc etc no it is the problem solving skills it is the problem solving skills that are required so from your childhood you have solved many problems and you continue to you continue to solve problems in your future also so unfortunately this problem solving is very much neglected very much ne neglected uh, while framing the syllabus while framing the syllabus in fact engineering is all about problem solving engineering is about design engineering is about problem solving as engineer you will be solving the problems but how do you solve the problems but nobody teaches you actually unfortunately particularly in the computer science field nobody teaches you how to solve the problems how to solve the problems why do, uh, learning a particular language you are not going to solve the problems you are not going to solve the problems you have to actually solve the problem and then program it and then program it programming is only secondary part the main part is problem solving you should learn how to solve the problems how to solve the problems particularly in the field of computer science even civil engineering or mechanical engineering students they should learn to solve the problems solve the problems so that's why i we have included this problem solving aspect and uh, in your syllabus also you can find the book how to solve it by computer drome please everybody read it in fact study it study it and then computer programming using c language and there is a lot of hype regarding python and some branches have gone with the python okay fine but remember remember so python is something like uh, taking the 
uh, while programming python in, in using python it is something like taking all the uh, spare parts and assembling it's something like taking the spare parts you don't write any uh, lengthy code in python because a lot of there is huge support support of libraries or abis are available you should know about those things uh, take those things and then do some programming you can do number of things using python fine but uh, as a computer science professional as a computer science uh, professional our problem is not assembling our problem is designing from the scratch okay libraries are there apis are there who is going to write those apis who is going to write those apis it is the computer science people who are going to write those apis so we we provide the required resources we provide the required resources which other people will use which other people will use so c is a language one of the significant uh, features of c language is it is highly efficient uh, or the code that is written in the c language is highly efficient that means even nowadays large software is built only using c language not using java or not using uh, python okay python and uh, uh, these java etc they may be user friendly you may you will be able to do things quickly but if you want to become a serious programmer you have to go with a c large software like uh, the simulators network simulator like ns2 oracle even the unix operating system that is built using the c language so c c or c++ are the languages which are used in even nowadays even in the industry for building large software please note that it's not the python etc all python etc are for doing some application programming if you want to do serious programming you have to go with the c and also c is procedure oriented programming that means we think in terms of procedures we think in terms of procedures how to solve it means we'll try to find out the steps or procedures in solving the problem how intrinsically we are procedure oriented it appeals to our brain so c appeals to our brain it is natural in c, while doing the c programming uh, we will follow the natural flow natural flow of, of our thinking so that's why we have chosen c so for us for us c is definitely essential uh, so it makes you to write not only lot software but you, for the other branch students uh, if you take other uh, software like uh, very log wage real etc uh, there you will be using the c language only not python okay c is something like a basement c is something like a basement okay you prefer uh, uh, fifth floor sixth floor etc but if you don't have a basement you are gone so definitely for computer science students c is essential so these are the some of the references from which this content is taken so what are the takeaways what are the takeaways so believe in yourself the great soul of india believes so you are already a perfect human being and we have a lot to do we build the nation we build the nation everybody is depending on us starting from common man to the uh, the india, india industry people etc etc all depend on us so we have a lot of responsibility so have fun in computing don't take things too seriously have fun while doing programming particularly play it's something like programming is something like mathematics you should enjoy it if you enjoy it then it's very easy if you feel, if you start thinking it is difficult then it will become too difficult for you so to make it easy you have to first solve the problems if you solve the problems programming is just about syntax and semantics so namaskaram thank you vanakkam this is welcoming you to the course next we'll course go into the uh, 
course objectives and outcomes and then the syllabus part that will also I will cover but meanwhile you can reply now oh, is it okay please reply in the chat box Okay, we will go to the course objectives and outcomes. Course objectives. There are two things actually course objectives and out course outcomes. Objectives are always written from the uh, teacher perspective, and outcomes are written from the student perspective. So, what are the objectives? So discuss, we will be discussing how computing has evolved over the years and the future of computing. You should know how the computing actually started. Computing started with probably using pebbles, abacus, etc. And in what direction we were moving. That is very much essential. So probably we will not be having machines like this in another 10 years. So all your computers like this, all your cell phones are going to vanish. They are going to vanish. They are not, they're not going to be there. Okay, they are not going to be there. So, we, we are going towards molecular computing and then quantum computing. So, we will be able to solve problems which at present we are unable to solve using the existing computers. The future lies with quantum computing and then molecular computing. Quantum computing and molecular computing. So probably you will, you will not be having you using this type of displays, screens, etc. They will not be there. Maybe you will be wearing something like a, this spectacle and everything will be displayed in front of you. In front of you, in the air, you can operate. Things are not far. They are going to happen uh, in another 10 years. So we discuss in what direction we are going to move. And uh, you demonstrate the internals of a computer. Why we should know, we should know about the computers, not just from the exam point of view. So, internals of a computer, what makes a computer? Now, if you go to the market, you want to purchase a computer. Now, you cannot say give, give a computer. If you just ask uh, give a computer, so you may give the old computer, old computer in the sense that which has less processing capability, less memory, etc. We should know exactly what are the technical specifications of a computer. What are present in a computer? What are present in a computer? That is very much essential. Now it depends on the task. If you want to work more on computer graphics or virtual reality, etc., it should have a specific uh, graphics card also, separate graphics card. That is very much essential. That is very much essential. So you should know what makes a computer and what are your requirements. Demonstrate the techniques for problem solving. How do you solve the problems in computer science? Demonstrate the techniques for problem solving in computer science. So, introduce the syntax and semantics of C language. A language is just about syntax and semantics. Syntax is how do you write? How do you write? How do you write? Okay. So, suppose you write. Uh, mother okay why why you have to write like this this is nothing but a syntax why can't you write, write other m or t o m h e r why can't you write because every language including the programming languages will have some syntax and syntax is for convenience for communication purposes so everybody agrees that m o t h e r stands for mother if people don't agree then communication will fail so syntax is about the way you are going to write the uh, you can say the uh, identifiers how do you combine these identifiers how do you combine the identifiers to form 
what are called as statements of a programming language that is syntax semantics again semantics means if, if i write a plus b if i write a plus b now what is the meaning of it that is the semantics now here the meaning of it is plus stands for addition you are trying to add a and b you are trying to add a and b that is the semantics so we will be knowing about the syntax and semantics of the language to illustrate the programming constraints of the language this is the basic purpose uh, we study a programming language so every programming language will have some programming constructs which you make use of while solving the problems while writing the programs now what are the constructs that are available that you should bother depending on the application you have to choose appropriate constructs maybe you have to choose appropriate language also appropriate language also depending on your requirement so for that you should know what are the programming constructs supported by a c language python language java language etc so that is all about uh, learning a language discuss how the data is organized and manipulated how the data is actually organized and manipulated organized and manipulated so how do you represent the data logically i will give you a simple example uh, for this one uh, say this uh, telephone directory if you just uh, found any find any telephone directory check it so it is organized alpha alphabetically alphabetically so name and then phone number name and phone number etc etc so why should arrange it in alphabetical order so now you are able to easily find the name uh, phone number of a particular person because it is arranged in alphabetical order if it is not arranged in alphabetical order it is random order is it easy to do, uh, find the phone number of a person it's very very difficult it's very very difficult so that is the significance of data organization of the data or in fact we can say data structures data structure subject is the core now you can say the number one subject in the entire computer science so we'll be writing the algorithms algorithms are language independent way of writing the solution we'll be writing the algorithms and we will be converting the algorithms into programs so we solve problems we represent it in a language independent way using algorithms and then we convert them to programs we convert them to programs explore different solutions to a problem any problem will have multiple solutions actually any problem will have multiple solutions we will be exploring these multiple solutions to a problem multiple solutions to a problem so we have to explore and choose the best one solve real life problems using computational approach okay you have a problem you have a problem so how do you represent or how do you use the computer to solve it how do you use the computer to solve it so we'll be solving the uh, problems using computer for that you have to represent it as a computational problem now every problem cannot be represented as a computational problem suppose you are asked to write a program to measure the beauty of a person say measure the beauty of aishwarya rai can you do it it's not a computational problem we cannot exactly measure the beauty measure the beauty so of course uh, for measuring the beauty we will take some parameters we will take some parameters and then we will try to quantify it and then try to represent it is a computational problem but certain things cannot be directly solved using computers so there will be limited there are limitations of computers so after courses completion of the course uh, we will have a thorough knowledge of working of a computer we will be uh, able to divide the problem into sub problems so that you can solve the problems easily you apply different problem solving techniques that are available in general and then in the field of computer science you will definitely know will know about the syntax and the semantics of the language you will be selecting different features of the c language depending on the problem to be solved so for all the problems you cannot use the same features so what are the features what you are representing suppose you want to represent uh, the uh, collection of elements you may go with what is called as array that is available in c language if you want to uh, uh, represent a heterogeneous data so say student data uh, student data consists of roll number name uh, attendance etc etc this is heterogeneous 
that is that is for that you have to use other features like structures and unions so it depends on the problem to be solved so we will definitely be able to choose appropriate features so evaluate already written code this is also very much important though uh, you may wonder why we have to evaluate the already written code so remember if you go, go to a software industry if you go to a software industry you can be a developer you can be a maintenance person also you will be listening to the client and then you will be doing the modification every time you will not be writing the new code suppose if you have a bank sbi so once this sbi software is developed it will be used for some years now but the issue is you cannot use exactly the same software you have to do the modifications how you will be able to do the modifications you have to understand the code that is already written by some other persons you have to understand it that is generally called as legacy code you have to understand it and then do the modifications so you have to understand other persons code also and moreover in the industry you will write you will work in a team so that means you should understand others code also otherwise you are of little use to the team so modify the code to improve it convert algorithms to prop programs design c programs c programming solutions for real life problems so there are the outcomes and in an abstract sense these are the modules we start with introduction to engineering introduction to computer science problem solving programming methodology abstraction paradigms introduction to c language programming constraints of c language control structures arrays functions pointers structures and unions files and some advanced features these are not actually advanced features uh, some some are advanced features but uh, in arrays functions or uh, if you consider arrays functions pointers etc they all depend on one another so you can pass arrays to functions you can pass pointers to functions you can represent structures using arrays structures using pointers so combination of this uh, all these modules will be there those things wherever the, the we have to combine two or more concepts will study as part of this some advanced features some advanced features how is it okay if it is okay we'll go to the next one reply other than habib who are there dikshita lakshmi are you there so we will we'll discuss one topic we will close with that one so this is the course organization and study plan this is the course organization and study plan this is important first uh, i have included this as part of the course description in even in the youtube we can find the link for this pdf please download this pdf uh, many people are confusing with this pdf because many people are confusing uh, with the course because uh, they are not uh, finding the proper road map so this the link for this course organization and study plan is available in the course description so please download it so well i have introduced you to this module 0 in module uh, one will discuss about engineering why engineering what is the relationship between science mathematics engineering and technology why you are given a bachelor of technology degree btech not bachelor of engineering are you an engineer or technocrats you have these ita people polytechnic people etc so you, have, you can say they you have craftsmen technicians etc now how the engineer is different from those persons from those persons so those things 
we'll discuss on how engineering has evolved over the years how it started with steam engine electricity uh, information technology age computers and industry 4.0 the present era is about industry 4.0 so it is about cyber physical systems cyber physical systems that means tomorrow so will, there will be no factories all the factories will be op operated over the network over the internet even the mechanical uh, things etc even probably uh, the buildings will be also be constructed online it may take some time but it is going to happen it is hap happening at a, a very low level smart factories are already there so just give the raw material you don't go into the factory raw material goes into the factory and finished product comes out of the factory everything is automated introduction to computer science so we'll discuss about what is a computer what are the how the computers have evolved over the years processors what is the current generation of uh, computers internals of a computer and what is the software how do you classify the software how do you classify the software what is the software which you are using etc etc and what kind of thinking is necessary for uh, uh, success in computer science the psychology behind computer science how do you solve the problems how do you solve the problems? How do you find the solutions to the problems? How do you uh, represent them? How do you represent them using algorithm, flowchart, and then uh, pseudocode? And then we'll discuss some problems and we'll discuss how to solve those problems. We represent them same using the algorithms. Algorithms. So those things we'll do as part of module three. And then programming. And then programming, programming methodology, program the way of uh, programming, abstraction, and then paradigm abstraction is considered as the core principle of computer science. In fact, we use abstraction in our daily life every day. Now also you are at present also you are using abstraction. Now what is this abstraction? So programming paradigms. What are the different ways? So, okay, I mentioned C is a procedure oriented. Now, you might have heard about object oriented programming, visual programming, etc. Now, what are they? Those things we will study. And if, if you have brief knowledge about programming paradigms, then you can study other languages. All the languages which you, Python, Java, etc., etc., come under this programming paradigms only. I will introduce to you the C language in the fifth module. In the fifth module. So we'll discuss not only the concepts, theory part, we'll also discuss the programming part. We'll also discuss the programming part. So and then programming constructs, what are the library functions? Uh, how do you uh, represent uh, a solution to your problem? Uh, what are the steps in uh, writing the program? Those things we'll study as part of module six. six. And then control structures, the core part of any language. And uh, how do you represent the solutions? So using what are called as structured programming concepts. What are the structured programming concepts? If statement, uh, what are the loops, etc., etc. Those things we will study. And then how do you combine the elements? How do you have a collection of elements? That we will we'll study as part of module 8. Program array, arrays we uh, will uh, discuss matrices. How do you represent the matrices using two dimensional array? We'll discuss and then how do you break the problem into sub problems and how do you represent each so each part of the problem as a function? How do you combine the functions that we'll study as part of these functions? And how do you pass input to the function? How do you get the output from the function? Probably you might have seen main empty parentheses. Actually, even to the main, you can pass some, some data and you can also return some data. How do you do it? That we'll discuss. And then the powerful feature of C language, the most powerful feature of C language, pointers. How do you use pointers to efficiently use the memory? We'll discuss as part of this module. And then structures and unions. How do you combine different data elements? Name of the person, roll number, which can be again, which can be integer and then marks which can be of real type which can be of real type 
So how do you combine all those things using structures, unions, and how do you make use of memory efficiently by representing the data in terms of bits, not bytes or boards? So that we'll discuss as part of structures and unions, and then files. So everything you use is a file. This is a file, word file. So your program is a source file. Your compiler is a file. Everything is in files. You know what are files? How do you use files? How do you store the data in files? How do you manipulate the data in the from the, uh, in the files? How do you again transfer the data to the files? That we'll study as part of files. And then some advanced features. So I will tell you. Or we can pass parameters to the functions using combine line arguments. We can combine different concepts, pointers, and functions. So some of the concepts which we are not discuss storage classes. Those things also we will discuss, and all programming related to these concepts we'll study in the module thirteen. So this is the. Uh, course organization please download this please download this course organization and follow it coming to the study plan so i recommend you to start uh, read from study from uh, this uh, module 0 to module 13 okay uh, if, if you are not interested in knowing about the engineering if you think uh, uh, you already know why you are given B.Tech B degree, why you are given B.Tech degree, what, what exactly is the engineer, how you are different from technician. If you think you already know it, then you can skip this introduction to engineering, introduction to computer science. But I recommend you to definitely, definitely go through this problem solving. Please don't miss it. This is the core part. If you don't learn uh, problem solving, you are going to become a typist, not programmer. If you take the programs from your uh, test book and then type from the internet and then type, you are going to become a typist, not programmer. If you want to become a programmer, solve problems. So if you want to start from the C language, start from module 5. There are quizzes. Uh, associated with them there are assignments there are extra reading material also extra reading material is available assignments available which i have not uh, uh, uploaded to the youtube this i am going to do depending on the interest which you show which you show so this is for trial so i am doing uh, this uh, course on trial basis i am experimenting actually so all the content will be modified and then uh, I will be making my YouTube channel paid channel also. Those things I will do in the future. So if you show interest, if you show interest, I will do the. I will allow you to use the do the quizzes using Google Forms. I will provide all these things. So learn problem solving. Learn definitely, this is the main thing. You learn solving problems so enjoy problem solving and best of luck and uh, you can if you have any doubts you can ask or there somebody is asking sandeep So all of you should watch the videos completely. So if you watch the videos completely, then only I will upload the remaining content. Otherwise, it's up to me. It's up to me. So somebody is asking Sandeep, are you there? What is while loop? Looping is doing something repeatedly. Basically, loop means you do you want to do something repeatedly. So that is supported by different languages in different ways. Supported by different languages in different ways. C language also supports it using for loop, while loop, etc. So while loop is one way of repeating the statements. But the point is, 
you will repeat the statements. How long? How long? So the, you will be repeating the the repeatedly executing those statements based on some condition. So while loop is for repeatedly executing the statements as long as the condition is true. As long as the condition is true. When the condition becomes false, you go out of the loop. So while loop is for conditional execution of statements repeatedly. Is it okay, Sandeep? Is it okay? If you are there, reply. Otherwise, I will close this session. I will close this session. Okay, thank you for watching. I am closing this session. So try to give the feedback uh, to me tomorrow. So this live session, there are some issues. How to do it? You give some kind of feedback to me.